got questions. Well, we have the man to answer those questions. Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham. Jeffrey, welcome back to another episode of Ask the Hammer. Good afternoon, sir. Hello, Jeffrey. Here we we got another easy one. I think. It, oh man, I always get scared when you say no, that. I I I know when they're easy for you. It goes like this: What are some ways I can lower my tax taxable income for this year? What are taxes? <laughs> All right, I think I got a couple. Well, look again. Every situation, Bob, as we often say, you know, the answer here is it depends, right? It depends upon who you are and what you have at your disposal. Are you working? Do you have an employer? Well, then you might have access to things like a 401k or a 403b through your employer. You might have access to things like healthcare savings accounts, HSAs through your employer or otherwise. You may have flexible spending accounts for either healthcare or dependent and child care all ways in which you can lower your income. You know, another way to have zero dollars of income, Bob, is to effectively like not make any money. That's another choice too, right? You can just not work. Um, and I only say that partially in jest because there are times when, you know, especially for families, when you look at things, when the cost of one parent going back to work, if most of that money is going towards, let's say, childcare expenses, and you're not really making that much more at the end of the day, if you view it purely in the lens of it's sanity for that other spouse, right? Like they're going to work to get away from the house so that they can have a career themselves. And even if it doesn't result in a, a ton of additional money, it just creates the work-life balance that that family wants. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But if in other cases where you're looking at it purely from a dollars and cents point of view, maybe it doesn't make sense for both spouses to go back. After you look at the cost of childcare, after you look at the additional tax burden that would be uh, impacted. We also look at, Classic ways of lowering your taxes, right? Like giving away money to charity, lowering your capital gains via finding losses or not selling things with gain. Maybe you look and if you have investments that are kicking off a lot of interest or dividends, you look at repositioning those in investments that are more tax efficient or locating some of your inefficient investments inside tax deferred wrappers, things like a 401k, an IRA, a Roth IRA, et cetera. There is a, a virtually never ending list of ways that you can potentially lower your income for the year. I mean, we could go on, you're a business owner and you buy a piece of machinery. Maybe you wanna use special depreciation options to lower your income more this year. But if you do that, it might mean you have less depreciation in future years. So a lot of this has sort of a, a push and pull. Again, we talked about 401ks, Bob. Great today, looks nice, but what if it means higher taxes down the road? So ultimately, what's best for you to lower your income may not be best for what is uh, what may be best for someone else. And even you looking only at you, lowering your income today may not even be the right thing. It sounds good. But if it means a higher tax bill, a much higher tax bill in some cases down the road, well, maybe paying that tax bill today to avoid that much larger tax bill down the road is actually the right thing. Well, I, I that was a great answer. And I think the right thing for our readers might be to send us more questions. That's right. Write in your questions to us. And you can do so at askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Again, that's askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. And Bob and I look forward to seeing your questions in our inbox real soon.